Are we ready, everybody? We are. Good afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the Nantucket Memorial Airport Commission of March 27th, 2012. Uh, just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a, a review and approval of uh, the agenda. Are there any comments, questions, changes on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll go forward to the minutes of uh, the joint meeting of the FinCom and the Commission on February 27th. Are there any comments or questions about those? None for me. Mr. Gray? No. Nope. All set? Nope. Uh, hear a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Po uh, uh, opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. The minutes of March 13th. Any comments, questions, changes? Motion to approve, please. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the warrant for April 4th, which I believe we've all seen. Mm -hmm. um, any comments or questions on that? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Gray has made the suggestion that we're killing a lot of trees with this, putting these in the warrant. So I thought, how would you all feel if we just put it in the electronic packet? Since we've seen these when we come sure. to the, yeah. I think that would be much better yeah. use That's of a great idea. paper. Yeah. yeah, but not not print them out. Okay, Janine. Got it. Thank you. Um, manager search update and discussion. I just see that we all got a bunch of emails. A ton. Uh, this afternoon, but I haven't read them, so I don't know what they say. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Is there a public comment? Thank you. Is there a public comment? All right, we got a ton of emails from the... Uh... The, the very last one mm -hmm. was kind of a little bit of a synopsis right. um, with the three that were ruled out. I beg your pardon? The, the three that were ruled out and mm -hmm. reasoning behind it. So that was, mm -hmm. I'll leave this for you to okay. look at if you want. Well, I, I'm sure I have a copy of it, okay. yeah. Um, and I think it deals specifically with the candidates. So if there's, um, I don't think that, uh, that's part of our executive session for today, but it will be next week. Okay. Um, uh, Janine, would you like to talk about the tentative, uh, sure. semi-tentative schedule that's been set up for the weekend? You have a copy of this in front of you. It's over there on the. Oh, there isn't. Okay, gotcha. <coughs> Uh, so the candidates arrive on Friday, um, so nothing's really happening with the airport on Friday. And then on Saturday, the four finalists will take an airport tour with Bill, as shown on the schedule. And then that afternoon, they will get a uh, community tour. Gail's tours have been booked for that from 3 to 4.30. And then Saturday evening, um, the meet and greet, it's not a definite yet, but um, it will most likely be held at the um, Rosen Crown at 5.30. Question? Yes. You, um, on Saturday, the 14th of April from 3 to 4.30, are all the four candidates and their spouse traveling together on this tour? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. They can fly on the wall. <laughs> oh, I would too. <laughs> I'm just a little surprised they were going to be all in one well, bus. Well, we talked about that, but besides, since they're all going to be here, they're all going to be at the meet and greet. Why not put them all on the bus at the same okay. time? Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's a it's a private tour, so it's it's. No, she's not going to take any other passengers. It's okay. Then on Sunday, April 15th, is the assessment center. And on page two, it shows you the tentative breakdown of um, the assessors, which will arrive at 8 o'clock and will be um, instructed by ADK as to what their duties will be that day and what they're expected of. And the commission will actually meet with the assessors after the day's events at 3.30. Uh, not yet 100% sure where that's going to be, but we'll know that next week. 
On 3.30 Sunday, the 15th. Yeah, starting at 3.30. And at this point, we are, where are we planning to have the assessment center? Um, well, we're looking at um, the Greater, Great Harbor, Great Yacht. Harbor Yacht Club. Um, seems to be the only facility that, that actually has three different areas that can possibly be used. There's still some questions as functionality, but Doug from ADK is going to go look at the space next week, and then we'll make a final decision. Nice spot. It is a nice spot, but uh, you know it's it's a, a remarkable how few facilities there are to do something like this, uh, especially off season. But even it's, it's, unfortunately, the schools are closed over the weekend, so they're not available. The new school is not available before until one twelve thirty or one o'clock, um, and uh, so we're very limited in the options here. And then on Monday, April sixteenth, we have booked the training room on the second floor of this building um, from eight thirty till five for the public interviews to be held with the candidates. Um, that, as it says, is a public session. The, uh, everybody, the public is invited to attend uh, both the interviews and the board deliberations. Uh, we're doing it in the training room just because Doug felt this room was a little intimidating uh, for people. Most people aren't used to having public interviews, um, but that's the way we have to do it. So uh, the, the session on... Um, Sunday afternoon to get the assessments will be an executive session. Here? Uh, prob no, I mean, that's, that's, great talking, that's okay. what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, we'll open it as an open meeting, but then get right into the executive session. Well, that's where it stands at the moment. Are there any any questions or comments? And the Monday, when I post it, I'll post it all day. All day. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, thank you. Um, Doug and Anel Kultman will be here next uh, week to uh, go through the, the short list and the pared down short list with us. Um, and they're going to uh, also make sure, you know, as far as everything being set for the assessment center and, and so forth. So. Uh, we will, uh, as I indicated, we will need to have a, uh, a commission meeting on the 3rd next Tuesday. The question came up as to whether we can do it at 4.30 4 instead of 5 o'clock because the, uh, the room upstairs is, uh, which is where this we're, actually for this, this room. room is booked at Well, is the room upstairs too? Yeah, that's yeah. taken by the HDC. So yeah, it's, well, it's no good at all. Yeah. So would 4.30 be work? Fine with me. I'll be dialing in that day, or you'll be dialing me. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. You can only hear, listen at this point. You can't participate. Okay. David, it's okay with you. Yeah. Martha. Yes. All right. Thank you. Most likely to be here though. Yes. Four thirty. Four thirty here. Yeah. Um, the energy audit. I'm sorry. Is there anything further? Anybody have any questions or comments? I'm still working on my list of assessors. I've got I have some conversations with some people who are thinking about it and so on. I hope to have it all wrapped up by tomorrow and I'll get all the names to I you. I don't have contact information for I have to everyone. give you a couple. And David, I think you gave it to for, for two, one of yours, but not the other two. Yeah, a couple, yeah. I have to give them to you. If you would, please. Mm -hmm. uh, Janine has actually put together a little talk piece on what the assessment center day is going to look like. You might, If you haven't sent that around to everybody, you might do that. I haven't sent the updated one around yet. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, the energy audit? Everyone got a mm -hmm. copy of it? Yes, yep. Yeah. Um, I guess it's, you know, I've just taken a close look at it. I mean, I've, obviously it uh, has the potential of giving us some savings. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of spending to save. Spending to save, <laughs> basically. I know, I know David had some. Concerns on it that we briefly touched on. 
it, my biggest thing is, I mean, we spent the extra money to build this facility to lead standards two years ago, three years ago, and now all of a sudden we got to come up with another almost seventy thousand dollars to save more my energy. I, it just didn't seem to make much sense to me why we would spend the money up front and then. But I know I, I thought everything was energy star rated and low. So I know we went through a whole bunch with that terminal. Mm. I'm not sure that it was actually LEED certified. Well, it wasn't certified, but it was LEED standards. Right. It never got the certification. Mm -hmm. okay. I had some thoughts. Go ahead. May. Um, <clears throat> I think that this represents a, a pretty good opportunity for the airport. Uh, they project um, that it's going to take two years, essentially, to, to pay back the investment. And uh, I think if, I, if you look at the second to last page, it's a, it's a good summary of, um, of, the, um, of the costs. And the utilities are providing, I, I'll just run through it for the benefit of, of, of the public, and that um, essentially they're saying they're estimating that we can save 24000 It's going to cost 68000 to do the work. It's 24000 a year with an uh, initial capital um, project cost of 68. The utility offers a incentive of 20, so the cost to us is 47,000. Uh, but you'd be saving 24,000 a year. So, it, you know, it, it seems to make sense to me. It's, my only question is, where do we come up with the 47,000 right now? Or, you know, are we able to? And if we could, you know, with the with the utility incentive being offered, it sure does. Um, you know that that increases our payback period by by about a year. So I would think we should Can we take advantage of that yeah, as well as yeah that they they'll finance it too. Does, does that expire at any point? That the availability of that incentive? You know? I only the only information I know about this is the same that we've all received, so I don't know. And it, uh, I'm sorry. It also mentions um, uh, payment and financing underneath that. Yeah. Where there is. Um, the terms of the fines are a zero percent for 24 months. That's pretty good. <laughs> really good. And if you do it that way, you should be actually ahead of the game after the first year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that's where the I mean, money I comes know, from. I have to push the numbers. Is this just for the terminal? Or is it no. for? I don't thought it was. Jeff was with them on during the audit. I wasn't there. It's, it's also for the serious. maintenance building, the hangars, and that's where some of the big savings come are on hangars two, three, and four, because you'd be replacing 400 watt metal, metal halide lamps with um, with fluorescents. But do the tenants pay for those hangars electric, or do we pay for the hangars electric? We do. The airport pays for them. All electric. Okay. Thank you. And and. Jeff, maybe a good question for you is, is any issues with that from a um, issue with the hangers, with the fuel? I don't know if these folks looked at the, the issue with the, the type of fixtures and stuff with the ab gas in these hangers. They'd have to meet the uh, requirements for the hangar. You know, I, I don't know what they had in mind. They're just showing fluorescence. It's probably similar to what we just put in the shop. They're very inexpensive to run. They put out about 10 times the light. I don't see any reason, but I have to look at the code book. I have no clue. Seems like a good proposal to me. Is this a is this a uh, an affiliate of National Grid? I don't believe so. I believe they they were just contracted to. Do it. By National Grid. By National Grid. By National Grid. We don't have any procurement issues here, Billy. Mm -hmm. Billy, I, I took the gentleman around, and they, well, you did the talk. lights that Jeff's talking about that we put in the uh, in the uh, SRE are the ones they want to put in the hangar. And then he did when he did go through the a new off building, he said, "There's nothing you can do in there. That's perfect." So, was there any discussion about explosion proof? Nah, no, he never anything? mentioned any of that. He I was just, just telling you get into the hangars where you're storing aircraft with the hundred octane. It, it, yeah. Could be potentially certainly something we need to look at. Make sure, uh, make sure they took that into account. Mm -hmm. Should we possibly look into those couple issues and table this till the next meeting? We should because we've also got the issue of the money. Sorry. In procurement and the money. Well, it says that they won't bill it till after the work's done as well, and then they'll finance it. So we really would only have to figure out, 
you know, uh, 148th, where we're going to come up with a monthly payment for two years. So roughly $2,000 a month. Yeah. Okay. If we're saving, 20, saving $28,000 a year, it should be a wash. Right. Pretty much. But I think, all of, you know, everything else that's going on, we better make sure we have an excellent one before we really go forward with this. But uh, I think yeah, we can follow up. Do you want to make a motion to table it until next time? And I don't think we need a motion. Do we? I think we just hold it over. Okay. Is everybody? Well, I think the sense is we'd like to go ahead and do it. Well, that's my feeling for sure. And um, who will find out about the uh, octane and all that? Well, Jeff and I will okay. follow up. And I'm Thank sure Janine will work on the procurement issue to see if there are any. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for the control burn. Yeah. We did have a meeting on um, just yesterday where Jeff and myself and Peggy met with uh, Eric Forget uh, Savetsky and Bruce Perry at the Land Bank just talking about if we could do something mutually working together trying to mm -hmm. trying to share some some of the uh, the cost and basically we had, we had a good talk we, we talked about some of the uh, some of the potential issues in working together but it, uh, basically how that was left is they were going to make a little presentation to the land bank commission and see if they had a had an interest in working together I think from a practical standpoint everyone talking seemed to think it, it could work where we could help each other out in some type of trade situation where we'd assist them, they'd assist us. Uh, you know, it does become an issue with the scheduling where there's just so many, they have quite a few burns that they're trying to get scheduled, just so many days that, that you can actually do it. The um, fire department has a, uh, at least a, a, a policy at this point, they don't want to have two burns going on, you know, even though one at the airport would probably be pretty well controlled, but their, their policy is only one burn at a time, so in case they have something gets out of hand that they'd be able to control. Um, so basically from that end, and then um, you know, the, the goal is be, being a, uh, two different town entities working together. I think that hopefully, and there was some discussion on that as far as the procurement issue, that that should not be an issue. That's what we're no, I, I believe we would still have to do an IFB for the burn boss, but um, it'd be way more scaled back than what we attempted before. So what are we talking about now in terms of potential timing for this? Well, the, the burn, window uh, closes here, doesn't it, at some point? The window soon? closes in June. Oh, uh, Land Bank, uh, they say they, they try to get all their burns done by about the middle of May, I think they said. But the, the, the so-called, I think the permit runs into June sometime mm -hmm. with the goal of trying to uh, see if possible. They have a fairly aggressive you know, goal already. So. I would say that, you know, my feeling after leaving the meeting, I, I would be surprised that we get all this in order for the spring, for the spring but hopefully going forward. Uh, and and, and the, the potential, I think it was, what, 176 acres that we're looking at. And they don't, you know, that, that's a big burn for them. So we're probably, with, with the conversation I heard back and forth, uh, it would probably mean doing it in sections and maybe get a little bit done in the fall and then get into a rotation. You know, you might get a quarter of it done. How, how did Peggy feel about that? She seemed to think that that would be uh, adequate, that as long as we had a, had a, a program in place and, and we got started on it with, with the, the means, you know, mm -hmm. something showing forward that we, we had this agreement with Land Bank and we were in, into the sequence and the schedule. She felt that that would probably be acceptable. Uh, so it was basically left of, uh, um, did everybody get the, the memo? I, I did, I, I by email yesterday. Yes, um, so basically, the, the, there was going to be a meeting, um, uh, Land Bank Commission uh, was meeting today, and we were going to kind of get back to us on, on how that went to see if there was a, you know, a, a, a uh, some type of positive feeling from the commission there, and then try to, try to work out the details. Mm -hmm. But I think going back, you know, for us to start over again and, and try to put another RFP out, and there was just so many, I, I don't, I don't think that's going to be successful. 
then of course then you know, the, the alternative then if we can't get this going is you know, to, to think about the possibility of mechanically cutting it, which is quite an undertaking. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's what we know about that. Mr. Just a couple questions. I, I think it's great that hopefully we're getting there because I wasn't quite sure when I had talked to Bruce last that that was would happen, and I'm I'm happy to be that you know that can ha that that it might happen. The two things I had in mind is: are there any issues with union personnel, firefighters, our our union workers being sent to work on other part, parts of the island off off of the airport? Um, you know, is it outside of their scope of work type of thing? So that's one thing I have in mind is does it create a personnel type of any kind of an issue where if one of somebody doesn't want to or, you know, so from, I, I just throw it out for you a consideration. And, um, and the other is, you know, do you see that obviously if they're going to come help us, we then have to reciprocate and, and go on their days and does it create schedule problems for the airport? Would be my only other concern is that you have limited. We have limited resources, and if you have to, you know, it's one thing if we're moving them around on site, but if we're sending them out to head a hummock or something, you know, how, how might that in, impact our own operations? I don't. I mean, Jeff, you. I mean, you kind of. When we discussed that from the staffing standpoint, you seemed to feel it was doable. I didn't see any problem with it, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Great, but I just want to be sure, yeah. sure that it's. And there was discussion about what would the required training. There was an online course that would kind of we could get started to get some training, uh, if if it was to get some of the airport staff looking into the future. If this was going to be an ongoing relationship, if uh, airport staff were going to get fully trained, then there was there was talk of bringing someone in and running a course. It was like a, how often uh, on a continuing basis would this occur on a given piece of property? For us, not for not for the land. Once it gets burnt, I mean, how, how many how many years? What, I would think it's quite a few. I hear like something. four or five years, and Jeff. It, once the whole thing is burnt, it's going to take a couple of years to get. No, I understand I mean, that. If you did a section, would it be like five? You rotate back to that section like five years from now and have well, to right, burn. That's what's going to happen. I, I, I thought that was what I heard. You can burn the whole thing years. and complete with five. I think I think it's five. Yeah. And then do it, you know, start again when it's. It's just it's such a huge area. I don't think that's going to work. Mm. Yeah, I can almost see if it got up into four weather. sections. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff? Timing and weather, they have so much they need to burn, and we have so much we need to burn. Mm -hmm. And there's only so many decent days to do it with the wind in the right direction and everything else. It's Today not be being a problem. problem. <laughs> it was blowing the right direction. <laughs> That was my concern, and, and when I, had, you know, the, from what I had got from Ruth, that the logistics based on that are what makes it so difficult. Maybe we can get there. They seemed somewhat positive that they thought it was doable. It would be good training for the for the guys too for burning and. Ooh. I mean, they might all be interested in all well, that. I apologize. We forgot to call Carl. Dan, I'm sorry. We slipped a cog. Hello? Hello? Carl? Hello? Carl, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, I'm sorry. We I forgot to call you. My apologies. My ap I said, no, I was going to get the, the free pass to the bar. It was. <laughs> That's up to you because, as you know, the commission, the, the board of selectmen, has not yet adopted the policy of, uh, of allowing remote participation, uh, other than passive participation. So you are going to have to be uh, doing whatever you're doing and put the phone on mute. Yeah. Okay. No. Not, not a problem. Not and, a problem. and we have just gotten through the uh, the control burn discussion. 
um, and we're going on from there onto the contracts. Okay, good. Um, all right, contracts and leases. Um, ocean wings. Turn your mic on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, You want them? You, you know, you dealing with them, you'll probably. Thanks, Bill. Hey, no problem. I just want you to get bored <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, Ocean Wings, this is a contract for um, charter flights for the live burns up in New Hampshire. We have to do three live burns, and they came in with the cheapest price. So it is a contract for travel. Okay. One question: Did they previously have this contract? Dave, they they were the last year. We last used them we last used. year, but previous to that, it was a different charter. So yes. Walsh or someone else did it two years ago. But now his plane's not big enough, or did he change aircraft? Well, he had an incident where <laughs> his air aircraft is, may not be airworthy at the moment. Oh, he doesn't that, have any That available. particular plane is not available at the moment. Okay. Is this is this what was previously being bartered with him? Yes. So we were in the current and then so the next contract later down is with him. Is with him. Yes. So that there's no more barter agreements. Correct. Correct. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, are there any questions, further questions on Ocean Wings? No. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. I'll second. Any other comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Carrie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just noticed on the agenda that the Cape Air quote is listed as opposed to the Ocean Wings quote. On the agenda? Um, in the other amount. words, we're showing 16650 but just so that everybody knows, the contract that's oh, being sorry. approved is for 7000 yep. and, and I just think that shows My really fault. good work on getting the quotes and the right. kind of money that we can save, you know, by doing it this way, that we had one price of 16 and we're getting the service for, for eight. All right. Um, that was approved? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, no, thank you. That's a good point. Um, EMS. Still me, Bill? Hey, you know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a contract um, for um, fire training on our ARC staff. It includes um, a year's worth of training, which is uh, 56 hours worth, Dave, correct? Yes. Um, throughout the year, and it also includes our triannual drill, which is next scheduled for 2014. Um, so the entire not to exceed amount is 30... 38169. 38169. <clears throat> Other questions? This is, uh, this is one that does not have to get put out to bid. Um, it is exempt from 30B because it's for training purposes, but we still have to do a contract. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Move approval. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unanimous. Mr. Gasparro? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Franklin Paint. Um, this is a contract for some painting supplies for the runway, which needs to get done prior to our Part 139 inspection in May. Um, so it's for supply only, and it's to cover this particular order, which is for $21,027. Um, I see there were two others that didn't respond. Correct. The um, Acme, Acme Maintenance um, did not call back within a week. Um, they were said they would get us a quote, but they never responded. And then the um, 
third company could not supply the type 3 beads that we're going to be using in the paint on the runway. I was going to say, that's a, that's a big issue on the cost this year because they've had to go from class 1 to class 3 or something like that on the beads, Jeff? Yes. <coughs> They should have been last year, but the state kind of messed up on the How does this fit with what the state says they're doing, told me they were doing for us? This is basically separate. The state's going to come in and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, the state's going to come in and repave taxiway markings only, repave. And, and this, this will be for other painting. And they're only, they're only going to paint what's there now? And right, we need to put more markings down in order to pass the 139 inspection. <coughs> so that the state may or may not go over top of them, but if they're not there, they won't paint the forest. So that's what this is. All right. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Just one. Do we know the date of the as the is the part 139 inspection in May scheduled? Seven, it is. It's eight, it's nine, seventh, eighth, and ninth, I think. Thanks. First, first week. I think those are three days. Change that, I think, to a definite. I've got, I've got the eighth and ninth, but it's usually three days, so it must be seventh, eighth, and ninth. Thanks. I'd move approval of this contract. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Uh, Nantucket Express. Uh, this is their annual lease for. Um, being advertising their charter business inside our phone, inside the terminal. Basically, it's just a $1,500 uh, annual business fee for the privilege of doing so. And of course, he has to submit his emplainments and landing fees and things like that. So just to be clear, this so everyone knows that's a fifteen hundred dollar a month. So it's an eighteen thousand dollar a year contract. No, no, it's, no. it's an annual fee of fifteen. Oh, a monthly fee. Hundred dollars for the year. Thank you. <clears throat> be nice though. Uh, that's what I was trying to. <laughs> Thanks. It's just a regular business fee by mm -hmm. well, vendor. he pays a business fee, and he's allowed to put his charter business inside our phone, inside the terminal. Mm -hmm. Inside what phone? I thought the phones were all gone. No, there, we have a charter mm -hmm. phone inside the terminal. Oh, if okay. people want to pick up a charter, they, mm -hmm. it automatically dials either Nantucket Express or Ocean Wings, who also pays the same thing. All right. Any other questions? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Let me move on to finances. To be very honest, I don't have a whole lot to say because um, the budget, the underlying budget to this document that you received in your packet is essentially the same as, it's not entirely the same, but it's essentially the same as what we've looked at previously. What is not the same and was not the same at a similar schedule which we received uh, earlier last week and reviewed at a meeting on Thursday morning uh, is the summary sheet in terms of the quote net earnings and the sources and uses of funds. Um, the gist of that, of this is that, and I wouldn't be surprised, frankly, if it changed since then, uh, since, uh, what, since this was presented to the Finance Committee, but this is what we have and this is what we're working with. Essentially, the uh, town is going to advance um, this year um, $400,000 from a special fund for to cover the divine settlement and a million five hundred and forty five thousand seven hundred and sixty seven dollars and fifty three cents from the um, 
general fund, presumably from what they call free cash, uh, which, as in the note says, they're waiting for certification from the DOR, um, to pay the unpaid bills and changes in the expense budget. And the, for reasons that I'm not entirely clear to me, um, the outcome at the end of 2013 will allow most of this money to be paid back. And I'll be very honest with you, the reason that I don't understand it is because it was not explained. And, you know, I'm not going to go into it any further than that. Um, the, the explanation that was given to the FinCom to me was not any uh, any more helpful than no explanation at all, although they seem to accept it. And um, but this is what essentially is going to be requested at town meeting um, by and it will require a technical amendment because I believe the warrant article now talks about. Excuse me, uh, two hundred and forty-four thousand um, dollars, but it may not even mention that. It's um, um, Rick Wilson, ten. Page three. Yeah, but this is basic. These are the unpaid bills, and 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 uh, the two hundred and forty-three thousand dollars is the amount that's mentioned here. Mm -hmm. As I say, this has all been a moving target. Uh, what was a surplus uh, a week ago has been utilized, shall we say, to pay what apparently are deficits in capital accounts of money that supposedly should have gone directly into capital accounts but went into the operating account instead. The airport uh, of, of the airport of the town. Of the airport. And, um, you know, as I say, I mean, we've got to get this thing through town meeting. We've got to get this budget through town meeting. Uh, but I have a lot of questions about it. And, uh, the operating budget I'm relatively comfortable with for fiscal year 13. It's essentially a budget which um, um, is uh, refl I'm, I'm obviously choosing my words carefully, but it's reflective of the fact that we will have the fuel uh, revolving fund from 2013, 2013. It was decided not to use it in 2012. Um, but it will be in 200, 2013, and in essence, this budget will have to be followed and reviewed, and there will be a special town meeting, as I understand it, in November to adjust our budget to reflect the realities of the situation with the fuel fund and other things. Um, this is... I, I gather that some of the other enterprise funds will also require a special town meeting, so this is not being done just uh, for the airport. Um, but uh, it will have to happen. Can we ask for an explanation from the Finance Committee to make it a little more clear so that you understand and we all understand? Well, they, there is a, 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 a document that has been prepared by the town uh, in draft form, uh, which supposedly explains it all. I have not seen that document. Um, I believe Mr. Gasparro has been given a copy of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it has not. It has not been sent to me. Okay. 
and uh, I saw in an email that, that the town manager sent to a, a uh, third party that it is hopefully going to be ready tomorrow. And will I get a copy of that? Yes, as soon as I get it, I will get it forwarded on to everybody. Thank uh, you. But I, um, of course, I mean, yeah, we are, we need this. We need to understand what's going on. Um, the indication is that we will be asked, which I guess means primarily me, but I'm going to ask for all of your help and support on this, uh, to, quote, sell this to town meeting, um, which I will do my best to do. Uh, it's hard to do something like that when you don't have all the facts at your at your disposal. Um, but uh, that it is what it is. And I'm, you know, uh, I'll answer any questions I can. I mean, love to discuss this further. Uh, but but that's what I know at this point. Thank you. I had a couple of things. I had um, <clears throat> this obviously um, financial stuff is I've been trying to make heads and tails of it as you have and at the end of last week I, I wrote to the finance director to see if I could have you know a, a little bit of an explanation what's really I've been having a hard time with other retained earnings and, and understanding what does the airport have could you tell me what the retained earnings are for the last few years and um, so I got an email that I'd like to share with you that um, a response that for me really really helped explain um, at least from their end how things are going and I didn't want to send it on because I don't want to be breaking the open meeting law and I feel this is the time to be discussing this though it may cause some difficult situations um, the, I, I inquired as to <clears throat> if, if you could tell me what the amount of retained earnings for the past few years and the status of those funds if any and I would just like to, to, to read the response which is the retained earnings as certified in the past by DOR included unspent bond proceeds that shouldn't have been included in the calculation. Uh, instead, unspent bond proceeds should have been accounted for in a, in a quote, reserve for capital expenditures, end quote. By commingling the airport's operating and capital expenses in an unreserved fund balance, it skewed the retained earnings amount to be falsely stated by millions of dollars. Once you remove the unspent bond proceeds for capital, the airport has a negative retained earnings in the amount of 150000 for fiscal year 2011. We are waiting on certification from DOR that would certify the state is also in agreement the airport is in a negative fund equity position. So I, I'm, I had a couple of questions based on that because I'm wondering, um, you know, where the accounting happens for the bond proceeds versus a reserve for capital expenditures. In other words, why were all of these things lumped together? And were they lumped together by the airport or okay. by the town? And that's sort of what I quite don't understand. And I was hoping that maybe Tina could come up and help explain some of this to us. I can't explain the town. What they maybe you can explain the airport. I would like to know. Um, Could you come up? Yeah, please. Sure. <clears throat> I'm just. I'm trying to understand how the commingling of operating and capital happened, and and how the accounting separates that. It, they're separated by the expense. The commingling of the income is, once it's funded, does go into the general fund. And then once the expenses are separated by the, the general expense versus capital. We do keep track of that way. But did we report it to the town that way? I, I'm trying it to- It generates from the town. They, they fund our capital projects. They go for the bonding. And who's responsible for tracking that? We both are. And that hasn't been tracked in all these years? Oh, it has been, yes. Then I'm sort of wondering how we ended up in, in this position. In other words, to say that 
And I'm not saying that I'm just you know sharing the information I have. I, right. I don't have a clear understanding, and that's where I'm, I'm trying to get to, so that as we go forward, hopefully we can have everything you know the, right. the ducks in a row. And would you agree that we're in a, a negative fund equity position? No. So no. it's the same kind of thing where we have airport town, right? And 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 there's some sort of gap, right? I did talk with um, Bob Dickinson last week, and there were several journal entries made um, in our capital item line items that were errors. And right now, they do have us in a negative balance in a lot of our capital projects. Uh, and by they, been, by they, you mean the town? Yes. And um, knowing fully well that we do have funds in these capital projects. And he said, don't worry about it. It's going to DOR. We'll switch it all around and give you some journal entries next week. Well, the problem is town meeting is Saturday. We have to explain this to the voters. <coughs> and we can't explain it to ourselves. To ourselves. I'm just telling you what No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to get a grab, right. get a handle on, right. on, on what, you know, where this is and how you know this you well, know this situation if i might interrupt you yeah. sir this is why i have been pushing for an extension of the forensic audit to look at the relationship between the airport's accounting and the town's accounting and really get to the bottom of why how and why all of this happened not to not to point fingers and but so that going forward we can um, Make sure it doesn't happen again, and that we're back on the uh, right. you know, back. Everything's back on track, and that all the adjustments that have been done in the last few weeks, seemingly, and this is editorializing on my part, but seemingly on the fly, um, are uh, uh, are correct. And you know, frankly, there seem you know the finance committee wants to do this, but there seems to be some resistance at the town on the town side of it, and. Uh, I just am going to keep pushing for it because I think it's extremely important, and and we need somebody. There's a, the town has a has a consultant that I understand is being asked to look at some of these things, but but uh, we need somebody who doesn't have any skin in the game, and uh, because this is too important and and too many people are being impacted by it uh, to um, let it, just let it go. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if um, Art, you discussed it with uh, Peter Liam also, our accountant? I haven't discussed it with Peter, no. Maybe perhaps mm -hmm. someone could before town meeting? Yeah, I don't think he really has a handle. Okay. He, was at the, he was at our meeting on mm -hmm. Thursday, and he, he, he has maybe a bit more of a handle on it, but... Because uh, the retained earnings have always been an issue mm -hmm. for at least the last nine years that I know of. It was hard to reconcile. Well, I, theoretically, as I understand it, it's it's kind of simple. You have if you have retained earnings, you can that are certified. You can allocate them, as was done this year with a million three ninety eight of the alleged two point two million of retained earnings we had for two, fiscal year two thousand and ten. They were allocated to the to the uh, budget. To cover the the budget projected budget deficit, the um, the balance of it was not allocated to anything, and that just goes back into the kitty, and is part of what is certified at the end of the the next year as part of the retained earnings. So it's sort of it, you can't specifically say that these are the retained earnings for one year and. Why are the retained earnings for the second year? Because why may include retained earnings from from the prior year as well. Um, is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and this is why we've got to get to the bottom of this. And, absolutely. You know, but you know, as I said, my first priority is getting through town meeting, some way, by hook or by crook. 
and we're showing a projected deficit for our 2013 budget on this of 1.2 million dollars and I'm, 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 well, this I'm curious is, is that because this is, we've removed the the fuel and that our that what we would make back as a retained earning off of the new revolving fund would come back and make up that deficit? That's correct. Or a substantial part of it anyway. And the uh, the other the other piece of information that I was provided is that um, that we've been at a structural deficit that's been compounding since 2010. Uh, and for 2013, it's proposed to go to the 1.2. And that um, I'm told that which, what, what the finance director says that it'll only get worse when the short-term debt is converted to long-term debt payments beginning in 2014 and going out several years. Well, there are a couple of things that, that about, about this, uh, deficit number. One is that when we originally did our budget, there were two, two uh, there was one expense, uh, credit against expenses that they have eliminated from the, they would not put in the budget, and there was the earnings from the fuel fund uh, for 2012, which they have eliminated, and presumably those numbers are in the their readjustment of the 2012 budget, but I'm not, I haven't been able quite to follow them through. And I, I guess I'm sort of wondering, is our finance, our finance director working on this as well? No, they have they've basically taken it over. And would you agree that we've had a structural deficit? Since 2010? We had 700,000 deficit approximately in 11, mm -hmm. and it will be again in 12. But they went forward with a $5 million building. I mean, I'm just sort of wondering how, if you have a structural deficit, you're going forward, and, and much with our other capital projects that are pending. How, we, you know, how, I think this is something we need to come back and review. I, the whole well, part of what I'm thinking on this is, okay, if we're, we have another article in here asking the voters for even more money in one breath and telling them that we need to have a subsidy in the other. So should we really be charging forward, continuing to spend, spend, spend when we have a structural deficit? I mean, that's... It, it, well, again, when we had that discussion, you remember the discussion yeah. we had a couple of weeks ago right. about all this, and at that point, the numbers were very different. Right. Uh, again, I'm not convinced yet that these are the final numbers. And I would like to have a full understanding, which hopefully we can sit down and get very shortly after town meeting, of where, where the numbers are. Um, and they will have a schedule at that time for us of what they project the debt service to be. The cost, the net cost of the article that's in the warrant this year to the town, to the airport is $75,000, roughly, after reimbursements. If we get the reimbursements. If, if we get there, and we won't go forward with it, obviously, if we don't get the reimbursement. But we would have already outlaid the money. In other words... Well, but the, we get the reimbursement commitment. 